Welcome. My name is David Farrell. I'm the Director of Veteran Services here in the City of Brockton. Jay's got a great half hour of uh, veterans events that the city has sponsored the last uh, few weeks. Uh, please sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> Veterans, uh, if you would kindly stand up. If not, just raise your hands for those around you to acknowledge. You. Um, I seen something that caught my eyes, and I just wanted to share with everyone. There are no words big enough. There are no hug strong enough. There are, there, there are is no smile wide enough. All I can offer is a thank you. You are my hero, you are in my thoughts, you are in my prayer. For all you have done, thank you. <laughs> we would like to uh, honor all the veterans past and present by placing a wreath on the base of our flagpoles. Uh, please join Chief uh, uh, Petty Officer of the U.S. Coastal uh, Guard, Frank uh, Paluka, um, and uh, Senior Vice Commander Brockton v, uh, VFW Post 1046, Robert Grant. Frank Pagluca and Robert Graham, thank you. You are handsome in your uniforms, um, and it's a very special day when we get, get Frank here to um, help us out. Thank you to BCA, Mark Lindy, and Jay Miller, who's always here to um, record our events. Thank you so very, very much. And thank you. A big thank you to our veterans. Um, thank you. I just want to take a second and introduce some folks that are um, guests with us today. We have City Councilor Paul Stadensky. I think you all remember Robert McCormick um, from the Veterans Project. David Farrell and Jack O'Connor from the Veterans Office. And a welcome to our new board chair, Richard Bath, and a special friend this morning, Paul Thank you so very much. I thank Janice and everyone here at the Council on Aging for this annual tribute to our veterans. I think. Uh, 
serving as mayor and uh, having the opportunity to continue to continue to serve as mayor, um, I think some of the most important duties uh, that I have the opportunity to carry out are participating in the recognition of, of veterans around both Veterans Day and Memorial Day. I, I take those duties very seriously. I think that uh, Dave and Jack and some of the guys will tell you that uh, I've never missed a ceremony and I'm right with them at 6 a.m. at the cemetery on Memorial Day. And I, I truly do appreciate the sacrifices that all of the veterans in this room made for us. Uh, you know, I'm the father of a Gulf War vet and the son of a World War II vet. And uh, so I, I appreciate tremendously the uh, price that you have all paid and the service that you provided to us. So you'll understand, I can't stay for breakfast because I got to bring my dad to the doctor. So uh, he, he was good enough, he's 90 years old now and he's, he's hanging in there and he's a World War II vet. And uh, uh, he, being from a different generation, had a very important doctor's appointment last week that he insisted on scheduling for today after the election so I wouldn't have to take a day off last week to bring him. So, so I've got to get down there and uh, spend a little time with him today. But it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here with all of you. To all of those of you who served, thank you for your service. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling caps. They have builded him an altar in the evening toes and depths. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Reflections for Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride and the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the thing from which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of the nations. Before I ask Dr. Marty to come to the podium and introduce our veterans, guests, and dignitaries, Mr. Macrina will now play the Armed Forces Salute. When you hear your service song, please stand, face the audience, and sing along.
United States Navy. across the globe today. Uh, many of the, our veterans uh, continue to serve in various capacities. I know that our teachers are throughout the community and throughout our nation, and I don't think that that, that service uh, ever stops to our country. As part of our celebration of our veterans today, we have a number of honored guests, and I'd like to recognize those folks as well. Uh, Ms. Shirley Azak is here. David Farrell was here. This is Abel Beckham's from Chapter 22, Building 22. Louis Cantino. Michael Thomas. Mr. Aldo Petronio. Ms. Joyce Azak. Mr. Timothy Sullivan. Mr. Shelby Dubois. Mr. Robert Green. Mr. Richard Saviano is here representing PA Timothy Cruz. Mr. Edgar Giraldi, Mr. Paul Pence, Mr. Paul Cummy, Mr. John Massey, Mr. Paul Wilson, Mr. Richard Crawford, the O5 Robert Cunnell, Mr. James Scanlon, Mr. Ozzy Osgood, Mr. Maurice Hancock, Mr. Robert Walker, and Mr. Greg Bates. I'd like to thank all those folks for coming here and joining us today. I've always wanted to do, come and see this uh, ceremony. I've heard uh, stories about it for the last 18 years. I never dreamt that I would be a participant as well. But once again, I'd like to thank you, and I'd like to thank our veterans and our teaching staff for making this uh, such a wonderful country. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to uh, say a, a few words on behalf of um, Superintendent Kathleen Smith, who's away at the conference, is going to be here. Um, I am. Uh, as well honored to be here and always humbled by this assembly. I've been to it several times and every time it, it amazes me. Um, on behalf of my family, uh, four of my uncles who served in World War II, uh, one of them, my Uncle Al, is still with us and I have three young daughters and every opportunity I get I make sure they spend time with my Uncle Al because of the stories he tells um, and honored to be in his presence all the time. I want to thank all of you here today who served and are serving and will continue to serve. Um, it's a pleasure being with you. And for those of us who did not serve, um, how grateful we are for your bravery and your service.
Afternoon. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today for our uh, Veterans Day celebration. That's a day to honor all veterans who have served in the armed forces of the United States of uh, America. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you to all who uh, braved the chilly temperatures this morning uh, to join us in uh, recognition of our veterans. On behalf of the City of Brockton, I would like to offer our utmost thanks and appreciation to all of those who have served and to those who continue to serve, and that we will, uh, as the holidays approach, uh, keep in our thoughts and prayers not just those serving, uh, but their families uh, back home. On behalf of the Governor, I've been asked to present a proclamation today that I will read. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty, ending World War I, the war to end all wars, after four years of conflict. There are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. And whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2017 to be Veterans Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Many people in our country don't realize that we have about 83,000 Americans who fought on behalf of this country overseas who never returned. We have about a thousand, a little less than a thousand in Vietnam never returned. We have about 5,000 veterans fought in Korea never returned. We know where they are in Korea. They're on the east and west ends of the Chosin Reservoir. But because of diplomatic disputes between us and Kim Jong-un's regime over, the, over his aggressive nuclear policy, he ejected our, our officials from JPAC, the, the Joint POW-MIA Accounting Command, from Korea and, and, and interrupted our ability to recover the bodies of our sons and daughters and take them home. And in addition, there's about 77,000 Americans who are buried at sea as a result of the major naval battles in World War II. But we're still trying. Good morning, Mayor Carpenter, distinguished guests, members of the Brockton Police and Fire Departments, my fellow BFW <coughs> brothers and sisters, and the city of Brockton. As you just heard, my name is Robert Graham. I am the Senior Vice Commander of Brockton Post, VFW Post 1046. I was asked 
to speak to you today about my service in Vietnam. I was requested to join the military in February of 1968. For your younger folks, I say requested because there's no longer a draft. When I was tested, I had high scores in electronics. Because I was drafted, whoops, there's that word again, I would be in for two years. In order to get into electronics, you had to be in for at least three years. Call me crazy, but I took the three years because I wanted the electronics training. I went to Vietnam in September of 1969, did my job for 13 months, received two bronze stars, and returned home in October of 1970. My return home is what I want to talk to you about today. Being a computer repairman in a maintenance battalion in Vietnam, I did not see the horrific things that you heard about or saw on TV. <laughs> what I did see was the treatment that we as Vietnam veterans received when we walked through an airport or on the streets of America in our uniforms doing our military service. We were called baby killers. We were spat at, spat on, you name it, we were called it. Please remember, those of us who were drafted, uh oh, not, not a good word, we had no choice. We could not afford to go to Canada and we did not go to jail. So we went into the military. I did not want to have anything to do with anything military or its associations. That included being a veteran. It took over 35 years before I realized that, hey, wait a minute, I am a veteran. I joined the Brockton VFW and have since worked tirelessly for the veterans and the seniors of our community. If you see me around town, I will always have my Vietnam veterans cap on, one that's made in the United States and not in China. I refuse to let America forget that we too, the Vietnam veterans, served our country, the United States of America. Fire! 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 Part arms about face! Thank 